Welcome. In this video, we are going to define what is moment of inertia. We will explain its physical significance. And later on, we will state and prove the following theorem, parallel axis theorem and perpendicular axis theorem related to moment of inertia. So let's start. What is moment of inertia? So if a particle is rotating about an axis and this is the rotation axis and the distance of the particle from the rotation axis is R and the mass of that particle is M. So its moment of inertia will be m r square. That means it is the product of mass of that particle and the square of the distance from the rotation axis. So it is m r square. So this is the case for a particle. If there are n particle or you can say system of particles. So for a system of particle. Suppose there are n particles and one of these particles ha having mass m i and it is having distance r i. So we will first square the distance r i square multiply with the mass and we take the sum of all moment of inertia from i equal to 1 to n. That will be the moment of inertia of that system of particle consisting of n particles of mass m1, m2, m3 and the distances are r1, r2, r3 from the rotation axis in case there is rigid body. So this rigid body can be said to be consist of the particles of infinite numbers having infinite similar mass. So if this is the rotation axis, this one we can consider the mass dm at a distance r from here. So this mass will have the moment of inertia r square dm. So this is the moment of inertia of that infinite decimal mass which is having mass dm and it is having this, it is situated at a distance r from the rotation axis. So some of the all moment of inertia can be represented by the integration sign. It will be i. That means it is for a rigid body. So i will be r square dm. What is the physical significance? Now, no, the physical significance, let us start, let us say that torque tau is applied on a system of particles or a rigid body and it produces angular acceleration alpha. So proportionality constant here is the moment of inertia. This is the moment of inertia. Tau is the torque and alpha is angular acceleration. That means angular acceleration in a rigid body is proportional to the torque applied. The proportionality constant is moment of inertia. Here we are taking this as a scalar, but it is actually a tensor quantity. Now is what is a scalar? A scalar is a tensor of zero rank. So if this body is rotated about certain fixed axis, this moment of inertia will behave as a scalar else it will be a tensor quantity. Moreover, J, J equal to I omega. What do you mean? J is angular momentum. And omega is angular velocity. It means the angular momentum produced in a rigid body, it is proportional to the angular velocity and proportionality constant can be said to be a, the moment of inertia. Now as we see that the moment of inertia is equal to m r square or you can say r square dm integration that means it depends on mass. If we change the mass the moment of inertia moment of inertia depends on number one mass and number two, the rotation axis. If this is rigid body, this mass m and the, its moment of inertia will be different at the different position of rotation axis because the mass will be farther or nearer to the axis. So it depends on rotation axis. Number three, it will also depend on the distribution of mass. How? Suppose there is a circular disc and it is made of two materials. 
the inner one is of wood and this outer one is the iron. We do not change the material or you can see the mass of the material and we replace the iron with the wood and wood with the iron. So it is iron and then it is wood. So the moment of inertia now changes. That means it will also depend on the distribution of mass. So moment of inertia depends on mass. It also depends on distribution of mass and it also depends on the position of rotation axis. Now we will prove these two theorems. The theorem of parallel axis. What is theorem of parallel axis? Now we will have to consider two axes. If it, this is the rigid body and this is the center of mass and it is the axis passing through center of mass. So if we know the moment of inertia of a rigid body about an axis which is passing through its center of mass and we call it ICM, we can calculate the moment of inertia of that body about an axis which is parallel to this ICM or you can say it is I. So the distance between two axes are D. So I will be equal to ICM plus M into D square. We know that what is ICM? ICM is the moment of inertia of rigid body about center of mass. What is I? I the moment of inertia about an axis parallel to the first axis. First axis is which? which is passing through central mass and D, D is the distance between two axes. What is M? M is the mass of body. Now to prove this relation, we assume that there is a mass M which is situated at a distance R or you can say it is Mi mass at a distance Ri. The moment of inertia of this mass about this axis, that is the axis passing through central mass will be equal to Mi Ri square. And the sum of these all moment of inertia will be equal to ICM. Now this mass will be at a distance D plus Ri from, from, what? from this axis, the another axis which is parallel to the first axis. So moment of inertia of this mass Mi about second axis will be Ri plus D square and the sum of the moment of inertia will be equal to I. Now we will open this bracket. So it will be sum of Mi Ri square plus 2 Ri D plus D square. So what is this? It is sum over Mi Ri square plus sum over twice m i r i d plus sum over m i d square. So d here is the fixed quantity. It does not have the i suffix or you can say it not changing with the changing in the particles. So it is m i r i square. What is it? It is i c m plus you can take this d out. You can say d summing over m i r i plus you can take this d square out and it is m i sum. It is i. What is this sum over m i? m1 plus m2 plus m3 that is the total mass. It will be equal to m into d square. What is m i r i? So we can have this value of m r i from the definition of central mass which is r c m equal to m i r i of sum m1 r1 plus m2 r2 plus m3 r3 upon sum of m i that is m. But here it is zero because this axis is passing through center of mass. That means sum over m i r i equal to zero. That means it, this quantity will be zero or it will be equal to i c m and it is i. So i will be equal to i c m plus m into d square. It is true. Now we will take up the second theorem that is perpendicular axis theorem. So what is perpendicular axis theorem? First, it will be applied to plane laminar. 
So this theorem is being applied to plane laminar. That means it is flat surface with almost no thickness. So you can draw two axes in this plane and the third axis can be drawn perpendicular to this plane. Suppose this axis is x, this axis is y and this axis is z. So moment of inertia about z axis. So we consider a particle which is having distance r from the z axis and the moment of inertia of this particle about z axis will be equal to i will be equal to how much it is m i r i square so its mass is m i and it is having distance r i so m i r i square and some of these will be the moment of inertia about z axis now it is having the coordinate x y x i y i so the distance of this particle from x axis will be y i so here the distance will be y i because it is x and the distance of this particle from y axis will be x i so the moment of inertia of that particle all about x axis will be equal to m i y i square in the sum and the moment of inertia of this particle about y axis will be equal to sum of m i x i square Moreover, this is xi, this is yi, this is 90 degree and it's, it is ri. So, from the geometry, we can say that ri square equal to xi square plus yi square. So, because of this, we are, we will, so because of this relation, we will add this ix and iy. So, ix plus iy will be sum over m i y i square plus m i x i square so this will be equal to summing over m i y i square plus x i square so it will be equal to r i square the sum over m i r i square so it will be equal to i x plus i y so what is m i r i square that is i z so i z will be equal to i x plus i y now we will explain this theorem what is it so it is applied to the plane lamina in case there is a plane lamina we will draw two axes in this plane passing through center of mass then the moment of inertia of about these axes you can say about x axis it is i x and it is y x along y axis it is i z so the moment of inertia of that plane lamina about an axis which is perpendicular to the both axis and passing through intersection point will be equal to i z and it will be the sum of the moment of inertia about two axis so it will be i z and it is about z axis so this is the statement of perpendicular axis theorem the pdf copy of the notes of this video can be found in the description below thank you